Looking for another job just in case you guys decide. Nice hat. We got two of them. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. You sure you don't drink coffee? I'm positive. It's, it's unbelievable. He wasn't here. Oh, oh, were you here yesterday? Uh, yeah. Last no, night? No, no. Last night. Here. Yeah. I was, I was here first earlier night. for the first time. Wait, 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 wait. But I will ask you about him. Represent him? You were defending him? Uh, what, what's going on here? <laughs> All right, let's go. We, we got to get up yeah, we got work to do. I, I wanted to ask about what you have. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. How we just went into Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Let's let's start a deli. Let's start taking numbers here. Uh, okay. You what? definitely weren't first. You definitely weren't first. Ruben, I feel like we need to make up. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> Just what you have on the D-line now, uh, inside and outside, how deep you are, the talent you have, veterans, young guys. Uh, for both of you, really, what that's going to enable you to do up front uh, once everyone gets working together. Yeah, I, th I, think, um, I think it's just kind of – I think it just represents how we feel, you know. Um, we want to build the team uh, with an O-line, D-line, and, and it was important for us to make a statement in this draft and this offseason that this is how we believe, you know, we're going to win. And so I, I think we had a press conference, and um, I said it's it's probably going to be a little bit predictable of an offseason, you know. We're probably going to go O-line, D-line. You know, you guys know how we try to build it. And uh, I think that every opportunity we had in this draft – where the grades were the same, so we weren't going off the draft board, and we saw a lineman, we wanted to pick that lineman. And, um, you know, I, I, th I think that the, it worked out. I got I don't even know totally what we did. We were just talking about, like, what do I do tonight? I mean, we hang out with our guys, our organization, who did a tremendous job. I really want to thank uh, everyone in this organization. Like, there's not an area, scouts, obviously, coaches, obviously, but – Everyone in this organization, from the kitchen staff to PR to equipment to video, um, you know, to to medical to video. I mean, they all participate in this draft, and we just represent those people. But um, just a huge part of what we do. And so we'll hang out for a little bit, and then we'll kind of uh, all and and coach does the same thing. We just reflect and kind of go through a little bit what we did, um, how it came about. You know, I'm sure there'll be some moments uh, we'd like to get back, um, just like when you're in a game. But uh, I'm proud of the process we had. I'm, I'm proud of the organization that we're part of. Can, can, I, just, start, can I just get Nick on, on the same thing, just on what you have up front on defense? Yeah. You know, obviously, we like to come in waves on defense, right? And uh, we know that a big part of our success these last two years has been the defensive line. And obviously, that's been uh, the success of this organization well before I got here, too. Um, so it, it's good to have that depth. It's good to have, be able to come in waves with, with uh, you know, with those guys. And uh, so really excited about the pieces that we had from from Jalen all the way to to our last pick with Mark Morrow. So you know, really excited about that. And uh, you know, we know we have a deep we have a deep defensive line. You come out of this draft like this, and you and you look at each other like, all right, we're we're pretty deep. And now we now we got to, you know, now it's. You know how he's handed us these pieces, and uh, you know it's our job to get them better as players. But what's cool about it is that it's on us as coaches to get them better as players. But they have so many resources throughout the building. That starts with Mr. Laurie. I, I just can't say enough about how unbelievable the process was of what went down and how many people are involved in getting the picks that you know these picks right, and then the the undrafted free agents, and then next step will be the rookie minicamp tryouts. It's it's really an unbelievable process that so many people uh, go into. Um, obviously, how he leads this process, and but so many people um, contribute to the process, and it, it just it so much reminds me of of putting a game plan together. Uh, for, you know, in a week to get to get ready for a game is pretty cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. About uh, you know, double dipping on Georgia after doing Alabama the year before, and you said something about how like the longer you do it, the less complicated it becomes. Mm -hmm. so that you, you take the best players from the best program. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you did that with, with Georgia this this time. When did that sort of change? When did that become an emphasis? Um, you know, I th I think it it really started in. 2021, you know, obviously, um, 2020 was a, was a weird process for us, not making excuses, but we weren't all together, and um, you didn't you didn't get to know the people as much as you normally do because of COVID, and uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not crying for us. Obviously, a lot of people were affected by COVID, and um, I think 
it, in 2021, we knew that we had to make sure our process was really tight um, as coach came on board. And we started with two Alabama guys. And the way those guys work, the, the kind of players they are, certainly the kind of people they are, it just reminded us that uh, no different than uh, when you're trying to hire someone for a position, you know, uh, obviously you want guys uh, to be really uh, talented at what they do in, in whatever role they're in, but um, the other stuff matters as well. And, and the comp- the competition level matters too. And so you see those guys play in the biggest games on the biggest stage against the best competition. Um, and so it, it's an easier, it's, it's hard enough when you have all the factors going into a draft pick. We talked about it a lot. You got guys, coming from a college town to mm-hmm. to the NFL for the first time, don't have classes, they're on their own. I mean, all the things that we've talked about before. But it, it's an, it takes the part out of the big jump in competition because the guys that they're playing against are the guys that are playing on Sundays. Howie, when you look at the, uh, the running back position, since you came back in 2016, you haven't um, given a veteran a deal beyond one year. You haven't uh, drafted a, a a running back higher than the second round, nor given any of those rookie those running backs a second contract with you, um, and yet you guys remain among the, the one of the better rushing teams in the league. Can you explain further uh, your philosophy on the allocation of the cap in terms of that position? Like I said when I came back, <laughs> I went somewhere. Um, you got your name. I, I uh, I feel like, uh, you know, it starts with the O-line. You know, obviously for us, that's where it starts. We have a tremendous O-line. Um, we have tremendous coaches when they put the game plan together, um, giving our, our runners a chance. And then um, the guys we've had ha- have been successful. They're talented guys who've been successful. And so I'm um, really excited about the opportunity uh, to get Swift, bring him back to Philly. Um, he's a guy that we've known for a long time. You know, even when he was in high school, you know, we were watching him. Uh, we knew what kind of player he was, watched him through college, and um, really excited for that opportunity here. When did you think DeAndre was a real possibility? And, and for Nick, how do you think he fits in your offense? <clears throat> yeah, sure. Um, you know, obviously yesterday when Howie asked me to, to watch him, um, was, was it yesterday? The day before? Um, whatever, one of those, one of those. We, we, when they took, when, when they took, maybe I should go first. Yeah, go, you go first, then I'll hop down. <laughs> that's my bad. Um, I think, you know, when they, when they took Gibbs 12th, um, it, it was, we thought maybe it was an opportunity. You know, they signed Montgomery in free agency and, and they took Gibbs and uh, we knew he was in the last year of his deal. And, and, um, you know, we went into this draft feeling really good about our running back room. Uh, we really liked the guys that we had on the roster. Uh, that we have on the roster. We think it's a, it was a talented group. It wasn't, in our mind, a position that we were actively looking to upgrade. And um, uh, But at the same time, you know, we're always looking for opportunities to improve the, the team. And when uh, this came about, we just felt really good about the player. We felt really good about the person. And uh, it adds an, another tremendous uh, player and, and person to our locker room. We feel like we really know that who uh, he is as a person, um, have a lot of connections with him. You know, I know I've mentioned his main name a lot, but again, you know, Dom is, is, has known him and his family for a long time. And so we knew him um, really throughout high school. He had been in the facility as a high schooler. Uh, so I'd met him when he was in high school. So it's a kind of cool story of a local kid comes home and obviously a talented local kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that um, – Obviously, first I want to say the same thing that, that Howie just said right there. Like, we, we really are happy with our, our running back room. This is just another great piece to add. Um, and so, um, but you can definitely see his ability to make people miss um, in space. And you saw that against our defense last year, right? He, he had some unbelievable runs against us last year where, you know, you look at each other and you're like, man, that guy's hard to tackle. So he has the ability to make you miss and also accelerate through the hole, which will, will serve us well and, you know, in some of the um, draws that we run and some of the RPOs that we run. And, um, you know, I don't know exactly exactly how we'll use him perfectly with each individual run. you got to get your hands on him to, to see that. But also in the passing game, I think he's a dynamic uh, playmaker that's done some things that, that we've done with, with guys in the past. Um, 
um, with some of the different different routes that he runs. But he has a great ability to to read defenses out of the backfield, to make guys to separate from tight coverage out of the backfield, um, and has really good hands. So, you know, obviously, again, can't say enough about the running back room that we have. We're really excited about the pieces that we had going into the draft, and we're even more excited about it with the addition of uh, it really, DeAndre. It really started week one when we played them. I mean, you saw the explosiveness when we played them. Um, he had a heck of a game every time he touched the ball. You know, you knew there was a chance I could take it to the distance. So, when you reset, when you in the pre-draft press conference, <laughs> you spoke about the conditions that it would take to trade a future pick. Mm -hmm. What was the process like? I guess last night into today with bring up. Yeah, uh, that that's fair. I think. Um, you know, obviously, we we ended our picks last night a little bit early in, in the third round, and um, we do what everyone does. You know, we finished our press last night. We were tired, as we are right now, and um, we go back, we look at the board, and then we wake up and we get together. And, you know, uh, Ringo was a guy that, um, you know, stuck out on our board. Um, he, had a, he had a really high grade. He was a guy that we were considering at those picks um, when we picked in the third round. And then we go through it and kind of say, all right, you know, like, what's our grade like? You know, um, a year from now, not having that pick, um, how's that going to affect us? Who may be available uh, at that pick? And, um, you know, we had higher grades on him than the pick that we traded. Um, we felt like this was a 20 year old kid um, who was a good kid, um, you know, tremendous uh, physical tools. And uh, we really had an opportunity to develop him. You know, he doesn't have to come in here and, and, and be a superhero. He can learn. We think we have tremendous veterans at, those, at that position who can show the way. And, um, you know, he can come in in a, in a role where he's learning and there's not a lot of pressure on him and he can develop. And um, we believe in the player and the person. And, um, you know, I know there was, there was reports. You know, we, we watch the draft. You know, they're in our draft room. And, um you know, we don't we don't have a question about his work ethic. Um, we don't have a question about his medical. So um, for us, it just made some sense. You know, and we wanted to get him in the building. We thought getting him in the building and being around Slay and JB and Avante and you know, obviously we got young guys at that position too that we like. We thought that would that would benefit us and him. And so uh, we were excited to add him. And, and obviously, I, I don't I don't know that I've done that. Uh, certainly, um, I'm sure you'll have that pretty quickly, Zach. I don't think I've done that. Um, in uh, around that early since since I've been in the draft and again you know uh, uh, thank you to Jeffrey for trusting us and trusting the process and when we looked at um, our scouts evaluations you look at, at um, his objective profile and then you know look at his character report for us and um, we thought it made some sense to do when you reset overnight Howie like that and you don't get up to the very top mm -hmm. so is it a calculated gamble or do you have sort of a group that you're comfortable with. In terms of... Um, well, you didn't get up to the first spot. Right. So if they say... Yeah. Well, we're going to take Ringo. And again, I, like I, I, we don't change our board overnight. Like it's not like we come in and but we kind of we raise a guy. No, but I, I think we felt uh, pretty confident about we, we were picking third. We did the trade before the draft. I think we felt pretty confident where we, what was going to go one, and we had a pretty good indication what was going to go two. Um, for us to do it, and uh, obviously, it's it's you still got to be in a position where you'd feel like whoever you're going to take at that pick was worth your third round pick next year. But uh, we felt really good about the position we were in before we started the draft. It's yeah, previously reported that the, uh, you guys brought in Glenn Schumann, defense, Georgia defensive coordinator, and when you guys were doing the process of looking for guys, how influential was that visit for you guys to get a lot of these Georgia players? And how much you take away from when you talk to them, potentially using what you talked about these players into the scheme and building. Them? Yeah, a lot of the things we do are about relationships. And um, obviously, um, we know Coach Schumann, but we know a lot of people at Georgia throughout the years. And, and we don't uh, try to put one person in a position where they're the only person we talk to. We try to investigate um, with as many people as possible um, to get as much information as possible. And, and that's what we did here with all these Georgia guys. You know, certainly, you know, I, I know it's um, <laughs> the, the jokes about Georgia, uh, they're common, and maybe they have been there. Um, but, you know, for us, it, it's about the individual players. And if we were going to bypass a player just because we had taken a, 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 another player from that school, I mean, that would be silly too, you know. So um, for us, uh, where we took the players was based on their grade um, and obviously a, a great tribute to Coach Smart and his staff uh, about the kind of players and people they develop. What did you guys like about Tanner McKee? And I guess how did you weigh 
the balance of you know a third string quarterback presumably um, against other positions. Well, I'll let Coach talk a little bit about the evaluation of Tanner. I would just say this, you know, again, when we look at uh, what the things that we value, we, um, you know, it starts with the O-line, it starts with the D-line, it starts with the quarterback position. And so um, we like Ian. Ian, we Obviously, we like Marcus. Um, this isn't anything about them. This was about that we think it's a really important position. Uh, we had a guy who was highly graded on the board, and so we took him. It's no reflection of anyone else. You know, we just – we can go back to the championship game, and, and the 49ers were playing their fourth-string quarterback. And I think for us, you know, you look at that, and, and these guys are hard to find. And if you like one, you, might, you better take one. Yeah, obviously, like, through the process of talking to him, you know, I'm intelligent, um, really um, – you know, knows his offense and, and made good, quick decisions um, with the football. Uh, so we think he's a great decision maker. We think he's got a big arm. Um, and we think he's accurate, um, you know. And so um, that was, you know, those are the first couple things, like the things you look at with a quarterback, the first couple things that ever come to your mind when evaluating a quarterback are those three things I said and then ability to extend plays. He definitely has those those first three things. And uh, we're excited to work with him. No indication of that – uh, of anything with the room. We're excited to work with the entire room. I, I got a lot of high hopes for Ian Book, too. Um, you know, that's why that's why we brought him in here, and it's going to be good, you know, with, with Ian. You know, he, he did a lot of, you know, scout team reps last year. And, you know, we have a, a, a good developmental program where he got some reps as well there, but it's going to be good to see him in the offseason as well. But looking forward to working with all four guys, we feel really good about that about that room. When you, look, when you look at the uh, Georgia and Alabama guys that you have on the roster, it seems like pretty much all the Alabama guys are on offense and all the Georgia guys are on defense. I mean, does that speak to, like, the strengths of those programs or just work out that way? No, We're just trying mean, to set up a good ca game in the in the preseason uh, over D scrimmages. Huh. Yeah, sense. I mean, Alabama's had t a tremendous defense a tradition and and obviously Georgia scores a ton of points you know their offensive coordinator became the offensive coordinator at, at Baltimore so I, I I don't I don't think we can put those those programs are just good programs they're good teams you know just like we're trying to build a balanced team we want to have a really good offense we want to have a really good defense I think both those schools have shown that we should move, we should move Joe to flat up <laughs> Josh Joe. Yeah, yeah I think so I guess just understanding <laughs> that you guys can still make moves during camp mm -hmm. during the season but how do you feel about this roster overall after the draft and, and do you see holes or, or do you think this is a roster that can compete right now yeah, in, in all honesty, I think that's what the next couple of days are for, is to try to um, just absorb what we did, um, see the things that that we're still looking for. You know, roster building is a year-round process. You know, we, we don't think we're, we're complete in any way, shape, or form. Um, you know, we're always going to be looking for ways to improve the, the quality of the roster. But in terms of kind of where we are right now, I, th I think, one, we got the players here and on the field, and um, we got to come together as a football team. I think that's a huge part of this. But... Um, you know, I'm just proud of the organization and the weekend we have. You know, the role, results will play out over the next couple of months and certainly the next couple of years. What did you guys like about Morrow real quick uh, at that late? Is it sort of a trades thing? What do you, what do you see at a prospect in the seventh round? Like that? Yeah, I think for us, you know, it's how we stack our board. You know, we try to balance just like, it would try, like you try to balance on a seesaw. When's the last time you and I went on a seesaw? Probably not recently, right? Um, but uh, you're, you're trying to just balance the traits that they have in their body, uh, what you see on tape, um, and the character. And um, for us, we, we stack the board that way. That's how we do our whole process. That's the first round. That's the second round. That's the seventh round. And then we go by the board. And uh, whatever is shown to us and whatever stands out on the board is what we'll pick. If there are even grades and we need a position, we'll probably take the position, you know. Um, but – that's how we do it. So in the seventh round, we're not saying, hey, this guy has better traits. Let's bring him up here. Um, you know, our seventh round pick, when we talk about him, you know, that's a guy who has traits in his body. He's got 34-inch arms. He went to Texas as a 16-year-old. Um, tremendous testing. Uh, he's got position versatility. He's standing out on our board. You know, we're excited to get him in the seventh round. Um, you know, sixth round, when we talk about Tanner, uh, he was standing out on our board. And um, a lot of the – I'd say most of the picks – it, they're kind of made for themselves. You see it. You see the board, and uh, we have a process here where we remind each other if we kind of try try to make calm decisions in calm times. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks.